So I've done my little overview of Boxcryptor and how to secure your files in the in the cloud. But I want to also do a little video on how to actually store your passwords in a way that makes them easily accessible and portable and ready to use and break out whenever you need them. I think it's very common these days where you're out and about and you're trying to do an online transaction or you're at the bank and they need to know your passport number or whatever and we've all got these sort of key personal details that we that we want to uh, have close at hand when we need them but also that they should not be accessible to anybody else. I mean th these resources are perhaps the most secret resources uh, out of everything, um, you know, even your bank statements and, and all that kind of stuff. So I've, again, you know, spent a while trying to l explore various options, um, looked at some different applications, some solutions which are paid for, some, some which are free, and I've come up with a solution that I think, again, for my needs is kind of optimal, and I think for that reason, I think probably it's probably, you know, optimal for a lot of other people too. So I'm going to do a quick overview of this solution. And um, bef before I go into a screencast, what I'm going to do is just describe the the sort of the key requirements that that I wanted to uh, to achieve in in this particular solution. And the first one was that I wanted it to be free. Um, don't need to really expand on that. I'm uh, you know a, a bit of a uh, cheapskate sometimes and uh, you know if I can do something for free then all the better. Uh, second thing is that I want it to be cross-platform so I you know I, I, I use Windows and Mac and uh, have a, a, a I have an a iPhone and an iPad I used to have an Android phone um, I want the solution to be cross-platform and I also want it to be unlimited in terms of how many devices you can use it on. Um, the third requirement is that I want to be able to access it on the move even when I don't have an internet connection. So call me a bit paranoid, but I don't want to be dependent on the, the sort of prevailing uh, 3G, 4G internet connection to be able to access my, my data. I want it to be accessible to me offline. And, uh, and the fourth is that I want the, the solution to be password protected on the device itself, right? So um, I don't want a, a sort of an encrypted text file that's just there, there in in Dropbox. It has to be accessible via its own application, which is password protected. Okay. So that really is the the, the list of requirements that I had, and I was only really able to come up with one one solution that fulfills all of those. And what we're going to do now is just jump on the iPad and show you how to set this up for yourself. So here we are back on the trusty iPad and the first thing we have to do is to actually download the the mini keypass app. So the tool I'm going to be using is mini keypass which is an iOS uh, uh, iOS version of a piece of software um, called keypass which is a well-known open source uh, in, uh, encrypted database solution which is cross-platform um, totally free and, and very popular um, so um, just download mini keypass from the from the app store um, I can just quickly show you where it is uh, just search in here and there's only one of them so it's there you go so it's right there at the top left uh, just download that it's completely free and what we're going to do is basically just open this up and at the moment we don't have any database files so the, the way uh, keypass works is it, it it stores all your data inside a file which is which it calls a database file or or a keypass file as as you as you see on the screen there so if we just click at the bottom right of the corner we're going to add a new database so let's just call it uh, my details and then the next thing is you have to give it a password. Now, again, as with all these cryptography solutions, please do choose a password that is uh, sufficiently secure not to be easily guessed by a hacker. So we're talking about sufficient length, a good mix of um, characters, numbers, punctuation, all that kind of stuff, right? But for the, just for ease of uh, use, I'm just going to choose 
one, two, three, four, just to demonstrate, which is actually, I think, officially the worst password you can ever choose. Um, so we're just going to do done. And so now we've we've created a new file. It's called mydetails.kdb. So we're just going to open that. And obviously, to open it, we have to supply the password that we just entered. So there we go. Now, um, in here, we have uh, the, the, the entries inside this file are organized into groups and entries. So you can have different, you can have different uh, categories and, and you can store your data according to their predefined categories. Personally, I prefer to keep it all in one single entry and in a format that I can just easily export out, in, out into a text file and store somewhere else, you know, on a USB key uh, locked up in a drawer or something. So I just tend to get rid of all this stuff and um, basically just create my own create my own group. So basically down at the bottom right, hit the add button, add a new group, and we can just call it details. And then click on the group, and then we're gonna add a new entry. So it's a very simple, um, simple sort of hierarchy. It's, it's one entry within one group, and that's just the way KeyPass organizes its data. Um, it's, it's slightly sort of over over involved for what we need, but um, but that's fine. So we'll just hit done there. So now, basically, what we have is one entry called entry. Uh, let's give it a better name. We'll just call it my details again. That's better. All right, so what I like to do, as I said, I like to just keep it all in one sort of freeform um, text area section so that if I need to, I can just copy all this out into a text file and store it somewhere as a backup on, you know, on, a, on a hard drive or something. Um, and, and that's obviously more difficult to do if, if you've separated everything into different sort of nodes, as you saw before, like home... Uh, home passwords, internet banking, all this kind of stuff. So I'm just going to hit at the top right hand uh, corner of the screen, hit edit, and just I'm going to put everything down in the comments section down here. And this is just really a, a big, just think of it as a big white sheet of paper, and you can just put anything you want on there, and uh, and then and, and and that's very easy to browse. Uh, quite easy to search and uh, so if I just put for example um, Barclays Bank and then I put my sort code this is not my actual sort code by the way da, 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 da. and account number is da, 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 da. like this I apologize if that is your sort code and account number but um, uh, that's just the way it goes. Um, then, I think what I tend to do is then just separate these entries out with a few dividers like this. You see, I mean, the the whole idea is of this is that it's it's you know it's all in plain text. It's very it's very easy to sort of edit and and navigate your way around. Um, so if I just you, you can go on here, you can put your passport number. You can put anything you want, right? So you get the idea. I don't want to uh, drag on too much, but so there you go. So we're just going to hit done at the top right of the screen, and we're going to come out of there by just hitting the the arrow at the top left, back into the main screen of the of this particular KeyPass file. Now, because this is iOS, the way we're going to save this file is we're going to we're going to put it on Dropbox, right? So this is how it's going to sync across all my devices. So I know there are some apps out there like Dashlane and 1Password, uh, which obviously do that auto-syncing um, for you out of the box. But as far as I'm aware, none of them are free for unlimited use across all devices and, and, and auto-syncing. So they always have a, a sort of a catch to try and hook you up to their paid solution. This is completely free. So um, We'll just see how it works here. Uh, so in the middle, at the bottom, we have the, the iOS sort of export button. So I'm just going to scroll along and open in Dropbox. And obviously, it gives us a, a, a choice of folders, and I'm going to save it in my KeyPass folder. And then hit Save, just up there. 
Um, okay, I've already got one there, so I'm just going to replace that one. So that's it. So, so now we have our KDB file in Dropbox, and that's it. Now any other device that's linked up to my Dropbox will now have a copy of that .kdb file, which is great. And if I, another thing I want to show you, remember I said that I want to be able to um, to basically access this data when I'm offline. So the way you do that, and I just found this out about Dropbox uh, yesterday, is that what we can do is we can swipe across in the in the Dropbox application and mark this as a favorite by hitting the star icon there. And what that does is it basically it tells Dropbox that you want this file to be available offline. So basically, whenever your whenever your device is is in a, a sort of a Wi-Fi, well, effectively whenever it's connected up to the internet, um, Dropbox is going to check whether there's a more up-to-date copy of that file, and it's going to download it onto your device. So even if you make an update to this file on another device, because obviously you know people are adding new account details, etc., all the time, and the whole point of this is you don't want to have to edit lots of different copies of the same file. So if you make a, an, an edit on your on your MacBook, for example, then um, then Dropbox is going to pull down that copy of the updated file as soon as you're in an, in a, in a uh, connected to the internet. And then if you lose your internet connection, you're still going to have the most up-to-date copy of this file and you can still access it offline, which for me is very important. Um, the, the only slight clumsiness in this workflow, which is I think common to I think any uh, any workflow in iOS which involves a sort of two-way sync process where where you want to be able to open a file on Dropbox, edit that file and have it automatically synced back up. And as far as I'm aware, this is not something that uh, iOS is good at at all, but um, it's much better on Android. Um, but there you go. So. I'm going to jump over to the the my MacBook now, and I'm just going to see how we view this this data in in on our MacBook. So that's that's really the the iPad and iOS side of things. It's exactly the same for iPhone. So I could I can install this app on iPhone, and then I can browse through my Dropbox app on on the iPhone to the mydetails.kdb file and just open it in KeyPass. Uh, sorry, mini key pass on on the on the iPhone, and there I have it stored um, and, and open on my on my iPhone. So it's really very easy. I'll just quickly show you and demonstrate that this is actually synced automatically back to my MacBook, and uh, and then I think we're done. And I just want to quickly show you where you get the application that you need to to open your KDB uh, encrypted database files on your. Um, desktop on your Mac or your Windows PC. So you've got the various plat uh, cross-platform downloads down here. Uh, if you just basically, I use on Mac OS, so you just download that DMG file and, and you install it, you'll get a warning saying uh, that it's it's from a, a, a sort of a download from the internet. You just accept that warning. These guys are, are very legitimate, very well established. Um, once you have the, once you install the DMG file, then Keypass X will be installed as an application on your desktop. So probably the easiest way to then open the, the, the database, uh, the file, is to just go in Finder. And basically, in my Dropbox folder, you can see on the left here, I've uh, the, the, the file has uh, obviously appeared automatically. Um, that's the magic of Dropbox. So I've got my file here. If I just double click, then KeyPass is basically asking me for the password for this particular database, which we created before. And if you remember, the, the password was 1234. So I'm just going to open it like this. And here you can see the, the groups. So we remember we created that just that one master group with an entry called My Details in there. So if I just double click that, and there's the, there it is. So I, I keep all these fields empty. I, I find them completely redundant. Um, just for my basic use case and all I do is I just have everything in this huge beautifully plain white piece of paper here effectively and I can just you know I can type whatever I can say Virgin Media Broadband uh, 
online pen x y z and then i can type all the information that is you know it's a good place to also store things that you always forget like okay when is my contract with virgin media up um what are my monthly payments supposed to be uh, which bank account does the direct debit come out of so the, the, you know it's a really good interface to just basically again just splurge all your all your thoughts all your key information that you want to keep secret just put it in this white space here and as i mentioned before what i've do from time to time is I basically just select all in in the side here and I just basically export the whole lot to a plain text file and I keep it on a on a on a USB key that I that I store in a safe place in my house. Just because you know you do want um if 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 some reason you lose the ability to open keypass files um who knows what that eventuality might be but at least you have a, a plain text copy a sort of a hard copy if you like um, in a very secure location, but that's up to you if you want to do that. So if I make any changes here, then all I have to do is hit OK like this, and then I just hit the Save button up there, and then you can see in the top that see my Dropbox is already busy syncing that back up to the the cloud. And then if I go back to my um, if I was to go back to my iPad now, because I've marked this file as a favorite in my Dropbox iOS app then the 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 changes are going to be automatically be reflected on my on my device so that even if i if i go out into the middle of the desert um i can hopefully view my uh my my virgin media details um useless as that may be so that's really it in a nutshell i uh, hope you find this uh this useful um and if you have any questions or feedback then please just leave them in the comments below and um thanks for watching